Ready to go through section 7.2C. Um, this one is going to focus on secant and tangent values or uh, functions inside our trig integrals. So uh, previous day we focused on sine and cosine being present. Now today we're going to really delve into the secant times tangent type idea. Uh, these Pythagorean identities will be super handy today. It allows us to convert like tangent squared into secant squared minus one. Um, those will be, be very helpful. If you like guidelines, I think these are very good. They're, they're very concise. It talks about the powers of things. So if I have a secant to an even power, what I want to do is convert um, a secant squared into two tangent values using those trig identities that we just talked about. And then I, the other thing I want to do first is just pull off an even secant squared, pull off that even power, and keep that in reserve. Because what we do know, if I can let u equal tangent x, then its derivative will be that secant squared x. So I'm kind of setting myself up for a u substitution, which means all of this stuff has to turn out to be tangent values. And we can make that happen especially if secant is even. All right, if I have the power of tangent being odd and positive, then what I want to do is slice off one of these tangents, which will result in an even number for my tan, and then pull that odd one over with a secant, okay? Because we know that the derivative of secant is secant tan. And that's what I'm using for my, my du substitution then, which implies that this has to get converted out to secant so that I have all secant work over here and I can let u equal secant and then its derivative is going to be a secant tan. So take some thinking on these, um, a little bit of, of looking at, well, possibilities. If I, if I had u be secant, then its derivative is secant tan. Oh. I need to hold off then a secant tan for, for my du. Versus if I let it be tangent, my u, then I need a secant squared. So you can kind of see the logic between these ideas here. Um, if there are no secant factors present at all, and all we have are a lot of tangents that are even, then um, what I'm going to do is convert even tangents into secant squareds. And then I need to keep a tangent squared for my, my u substitution, okay? Those are really good um, guidelines. I tend to kind of memorize those so that I have those possibilities in my head. You can think them through, of course. If you have a secant that is an odd power, then it's best to use integration by parts. And that kind of gets interesting. It becomes a little bit circular. Um, a circular type pattern in that integration by parts. If none of these first four techniques cover what you need, what you might want to do is just go back to the basics and convert into sine and cosine and try to work from there. All right, so on the back side of your notes, I have three problems. We're going to try and work through those three. Uh, best thing to do is when you when you encounter your integral is analyze it first. First thing I notice is I have secant that is even. If secant's even, then I could split off easily a secant squared. But that would mean that I want my u to be tangent, wouldn't it? So that when I do its derivative, I get that secant squared. So what I'm going to do is put this in my back pocket, keep a secant squared off to the side, ready for my u substitution. That'll be my du. And I think this is really following this first rule right here. Let's set it up. So we would have a secant squared 3x. I'm going to put my tangent next, tangent 3, 3x. And here's my little reserve, secant squared 3x dx. I'm going to be needing that for my u substitution. So I know in my kind of forethought here, I'm going to want my u to be tangent x so that I get out, whoops, it's 3x, isn't it? So that I get out 3 secant squared 3x, little chain rule there. 
And most likely I'm going to need to match up to just a one secant of 3x. So a one third du will be my secant squared 3x dx. I know down the path that's what I want. So basically I should work with u getting to be tangents. All right, so over on this step, can I make this all into tangent values? And the answer is yes, you can, because secant squared can be rewritten using those trig identity. Whoops, one too far. Those trig identities. Secant squared is the same thing as one plus tangent squared. So let's use that substitution as well. So secant squared is going to convert into one plus tangent squared, three x, and then I have a tangent cubed, 3x, and then I have my untouchable because I need this in reserve, my secant squared 3x dx to make my u substitution work out perfectly. I told you I want everything in terms of tangents, so what I'm going to do is distribute, and you're going to think that this is magic. It is kind of, isn't it? Um, tangent cubed 3x plus tangent to the fifth 3x gets multiplied by my little reserve, my little friend here, secant squared 3x dx. All right, let's do some u subbing here. u to the third plus u to the fifth secant squared 3x dx is equivalent to a one-third du. So I'm going to replace that with, I'll do it in red, du and a one-third. And now, you know, you're saying, oh, home free, aren't we? This will be awesome. So we get one-third. Integrate u to the fourth over four plus u to the fifth over five plus our c. And where does that take me? Well, I'd multiply this and get 1 12th. U was tangent, so I'd have 1 12th tangent of the, to the fourth of 3x plus 1 third times 1 fifth makes 1 15th tangent to the fifth power. Did I not? What am I doing here, guys? Shouldn't that go up to a sixth? Something just didn't seem right there. I'm sorry. So 1 8th, 3 times 6 is 1 18th. Good Lord. Tangent to the 6th, 3x, and then our plus c. And there, we finally got a right answer out of me. The next one is um, all even, isn't it? I have a tangent to the 4th. So I'm, I'm thinking in my head, you know, what if I break this apart and do tangent squared x, tangent squared x, whose derivative gives me tangent squared? Nobody's, right? Nobody's does that. If I went secant squared minus 1 instead of tangent squared, would that be helpful? Well, the derivative of tan is secant squared. Well, that seems that seems useful, doesn't it? Okay, I think we're headed in the right direction. Look over here at the rules list. It says if the power of, of uh, tangent is odd. No, we don't have that scenario, do we? Ooh, if we have no secant factors, that's true. We don't have secant factors. And the power of tangent is even, convert a tangent squared into a secant fit squared. Then expand it and repeat if necessary, meaning if I still have tangent squareds, I might have to repeat. Repeat and repeat. So let's proceed. We've already kind of started talking this one through, so I'm just going to play off of what we already had established here because we were headed in the right direction. It said break them apart, get a tangent squared, convert it to a secant squared. Let's distribute. And I know this is a bounded function, but for right now, I really just need to focus on getting the antiderivative. Then I'll worry about my bounds. 
If I distribute, I'm also going to get a, uh, let's see, it'll be a minus tangent squared x dx. Well, you know what? I'm loving this first piece because if I make this my u, then the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and I have my du present there. So that one, it does not worry me. The next piece, integrating tangent squared, well, nobody's derivative is directly tangent squared. So what I do is I repeat this same process where it talked about the tangent having an even power, which in this case we still do, right? So we're going to convert this out. All right, so let's just repeat our process here. We got tangent squared x secant squared x dx. I'm going to make that one separate integral minus. Now this next integral, well, I'll put it in red so, so you know where it's coming from. Tangent squared, that's the same thing as secant squared x minus 1 dx. And the integral of secant squared, oh, that's doable, isn't it? The integral of secant squared um, is tangent. I think we're all set. So a little u sub for this guy on the first. So u, let's let u equal tangent. Then du equals secant squared x dx. Perfect. So my blue integral is going to be a u squared du. Secant squared was my du. Uh, I'm going to integrate secant squared. The integral of secant squared is a tan x. And the integral of 1 with respect to x would be minus x there. And then I've got some plus c going on. So I've kind of got a little bit of half half solved, not half not solved. This will become a u cubed, a one third u cubed, which u is tangent, isn't it? So we get a tangent cubed x minus tangent x plus x. Don't forget to distribute. And we should be good. What you'll notice is that we are all, oh, I guess I didn't have to do the plus C, did I? All right, we're, let's go back and do now what the real question was from 0 to pi over 4 of um, our function, which was tan the fourth x dx. I know it's going to integrate into this, 1 third tan cubed x minus tan x x plus x evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. So now I'm ignoring this fact that I had a constant because I'm into a definite integral. That's going to give us 1 third. Um, the tangent of pi over 4 we'll have to calculate and then I'll cube that result minus the tangent of pi over 4 plus pi over 4. There's our lead. That's like our f evaluate at pi over 4, isn't it? Minus, now we're doing our f evaluating 0. Uh, 0 goes in. I'm going to have minus 1 third tan of 0, whatever that comes out to. I'll cube it. Minus tan of 0 plus a 0. Oh, didn't really need to write that down. Okay. Whew. These are doozies, aren't they? You actually have to be pretty darn uh, persistent to, to power through these. Unit circles, sometimes it helps just to draw a little picture and think, okay, pi over 4, that is root 2 over root 2. Maybe you have the tangent values memorized and trust yourself. I don't always trust myself on those, so I just kind of think it through. Sine over cosine, so it's this divided by the same. Same over same is going to give me 1. Cube my 1, I'm still at a 1. This will evaluate to 1. And then I have my plus uh, pi over 4. Tangent of 0. Okay, tangent of 0, we are now at this location. Sine divided by cosine. Oh, that's going to be 0. So I have minus 0, tangent of 0, plus 0. And we got nothing down there. And 
oh, let's see, we got one, one third minus one plus just getting it so I can see what I have here. That's going to give me a negative two thirds and a positive and a positive pi over four. How about pi over four minus two thirds? Sounds like a great answer to me, and it is correct. That was a long problem. Those tangents, when they're even, can become a lot of work because you do this splitting off. Just think if we'd started with tangent to the sixth, I would have had a split off again and again on that. I'm trying to see where we split off. Yeah, so remember we, we converted a tangent squared. If this had been six, I would have had four of these here somewhere. Somewhere I would have had four. Then I would have had to do another split into a tangent squared x and another tangent squared x. And it just becomes super long. You can get to the answer. You just have to be persistent. And then this last one says, for integrals involving powers of cotangent and cosecant, you can follow a similar strategy to those used for powers of tangents and secants. Also, when integrating trigonometric functions, remember that sometimes it can be helpful just to convert the whole thing into sine and cosine, which is what we're going to do on this one. I know a lot of these talked about even and positive, positive, positive exponents. Well, in this case, you know, my, my exponent would actually be a negative 2 for that tan. So the rules just don't apply so well. So if all else fails, if all else fails, you know, go back to the basics. And the basics would look like sine and cosine. See if we can kind of unstick ourselves on that. So do some conversions here. Secant. Well, secant is the same as 1 over cosine. And tangent. I guess, you know what I probably would have done first, guys? I'm kind of jumping the gun. Maybe I would have said, what if I let u be tangent? Well, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, which I don't have present. So I knew u sub wasn't a good option. I did kind of run that through my brain first before going into this scenario. So I have 1 over cosine for secant. Tangent is sine squared x over cosine squared x. So we have fraction over a fraction. And we know that that allows us to work with multiplying by the reciprocal of our denominator. 1 over cosine x, our numerator. Let's flip over. Our fraction will have cosine squared x over sine squared x. And you can see we're going to get a cancellation of cosine there. So let's reduce the cosines. That's going to give me an integral that has a cosine over a sine. Do you see something happening here? I hope there's a smile on your face right now. Because let's let our u equal sine. You know, often it is the denominator that you're going to have to look to to allow that be, to be the u. And in this case, it looks like that's going to be quite favorable for us. So if I let u equal sine, then du becomes cosine, cosine dx. Sweet. That's a perfect scenario for us. So what do I have? I replace sine with u, so it becomes 1 over u squared. And my Cosine x dx becomes the du, doesn't it? It gets replaced with du. All right, if you aren't good integrating with things in the bottom, let's just rewrite it uh, with that negative exponent. Now, add a power. Okay, that's going to be a u negative 1. Divide by that new power, which is like multiplying by the same number there, plus our c. It wasn't definite, was it? No. Final answer, negative 1 over u, which is a sine of x plus c. All right, you guys, give it a shot for homework. The homework is, what, it's about six, seven problems. Oh, maybe eight. Eight problems there. Um, I would definitely have my notes and refer to all this goodness here as you go through. 
because it really does a nice job of, of talking about the different scenarios and giving you advice of what to try. Okay, good luck. Thanks for tuning in.